Hello everybody and welcome to The Mousetrap, the lost production of Top Hat Productions. So, we've been in the, under this pandemic for quite a while now. So what we've decided to do is we're going to make a documentary talking about The Mousetrap. Now this pandemic happened while we were still in production, so now obviously we're not able to do it. But what we we're able to do is we we're able to have a documentary interviewing some of the actors and cast of The Mousetrap to see behind the scenes of what really happened in this play that unfortunately will probably not be able to be seen in public. So, without further ado, we will start the interviewing process. What were some ideas for the next play for Top Hat to do after A Christmas Carol? No, we we were all just. I, don't, I I really I don't even remember how we how we like decided. decided. We kind of like got so consumed with murder mystery mousetrap. Let's do it. Yeah. So we don't we didn't really remember any of the ideas before that. Well, the year just... before Top Hat even started, we read a a murder mystery, and then we went to see the murder mystery. Yes. You remember? Yeah. Y'all yes. went. Yeah. We saw that, um, and then there were none. And I don't know. I guess we just kind of went off that. Yeah, we just went off. We that. like the vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, for our next question, um, how did this play come to be? Um, so basically, um, what were the beginning steps to have the mouse trap come to life? Well, we had a whole new, we had a brand new class. Yeah, that was yeah. the hardest part. That, that was, was one of the difficulties we had <coughs> because we had to figure out how to move the people that weren't actually in the play. Yeah. <laughs> it just came it to just, be. It just came to be. It just came to be. So um, what about, um, more specifically, um, what about the castings or just uh, the parts? How did, you, how did you get through the auditions? How did you determine, okay, this person is playing this role? Yeah, that was a lot. Yeah, because... That was a really painstaking process. Yeah, because yeah, I... Ended. Like, the first, <laughs> like, the first primary audition that we had was, like, for um, Molly, Giles, Miss Casewell, and um, Christopher Wren. But our Molly and a couple of other characters were interchanged a few times before we actually landed on our final cast. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, very hard to get there because there are a lot of different time management difficulties and things like that so we had to change characters a couple of times yeah i remember i was every day i would go in that class and fake being sick and i'll admit this now <laughs> i fake being sick and i, I convinced all y'all which is what i'm most proud of <laughs> um and i was hoping i could get both i'm gonna be a part but then i want to say there was three people before me who was meant to do my role and then three, two or three. I don't two remember. Or three, yeah. Two or three. I don't remember exactly. Wait a minute. I'm so lost. I don't <laughs> remember. I don't remember a single thing sick. about yeah, this that, play. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, I'm you just tell, realizing Robbie, I don't remember a single thing about this you play. You guys, Robbie, I, I told him every day I was faking yeah. being sick. He was not lying about that. Um, I didn't feel like doing anything because I was not in it. But um, <laughs> then Doctor. Okay now. Yeah, you know, Doctor Jones came to me and Robbie, and well, you know, Robbie doesn't yeah. like doing stuff on stage, so I took a bullet for him. He took a few balls. And it didn't matter anyway, because coronavirus <laughs> said, nah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I mean, like, what, what the heck was the question? <laughs> casting process. Um, casting it was process. casting. Um, yeah. Yeah, it so, really, um, a short answer to that question, we just, like, did it. Oh, I, I think, think that's a lot of what we do. Yeah, a lot of what we do is we just do it. We just do it. We just, like, out. kind of wing it until we aren't wing it, and we're just going for yeah. it. Mm. Fake yeah. it till you make it. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. Well, we should get t-shirts. Yes. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. So um, those are definitely uh, some good responses. I think we all had some uh, uh, good um, answers there. Am I sweaty? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're still rolling. <laughs> I know we, we are. We can cut it out. So um, how did um, Top Hat uh, build, sort of decide on the set for the mousetrap? We got a bunch it. of free stuff, and we just said, all right, we can use this. Let's put this here. Oh, hold on. We need more room. Let's get rid of some stuff. 
oh, this looks vintage, let's put this in here. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, like, we also kind of went off of the stage from And Then There Were None, because mm -hmm. I think we all remembered, like, I how don't. it was set up. <laughs> <laughs> Because all me and Ethan remember is that Peter Griffin. <laughs> yeah, there's a dog. Peter Griffin was in the audience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we were in the you know, balcony area, and at the bottom part on the right side, if you're in the audience, there's a guy. <laughs> Come on, he did not care about the stage. He did not care about the actor space. He was like all up <laughs> on the stage. He had his right on the stage, and his chair was right against it. He would, family guy, Peter Griffin. He would, that, that. <laughs> Why are you putting that out to me? Because I had not noticed him at first. I started laughing. No, my mom not mad at me. And then I started laughing at him. And we laughed all the way through the second act. Or no, the first act. The first act. <laughs> okay, so... Um, that, was, that was about the set. These cups. Seven dollars for one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so that's only a dollar. That's like a... I don't, I don't want to do the math. Those are nice kids. But these are nice, nice cups. I don't know if you can hear that, but our teacher said these are nice cups. That, that lamp actually wasn't even original. I went to my grandma's house this morning and got that, so. Mm. Yeah, stole um, it. Yeah, the set, all of this is like Dr. Jones stuff, pretty but much. But also, when we went to that thrift store. Yeah, right. The thrift, do we have anything from the thrift store? No, uh, wait, do we? It's all from my brother Yeah, it's all from Dr. Yes. Jones' and, um, brother-in-law's. We I just think, took his house. And I think also, like, wait, um, does he just, does he, he just doesn't have any furniture right now? <laughs> So it's unused furniture. That's what it's like with my step siblings. <laughs> they both moved to Alaska. <laughs> okay, yeah. next right. question. That okay, was the so for the set. Um, next question. Um, so uh, everyone seemed to love the costumes and the lighting and just all the visually stunning attributes of a Christmas carol. So uh, were you prepared to outdo yourselves with the mousetrap? I think. I think that was the goal. Because we were like, we can't just stay the same like the same production level as last time so we kind of were wanting to like go further and like do a more complex play to wow our audience but unfortunately they never got to see the final product but no. as you can see the set is pretty good yeah i think the goal was to impress them but i don't think well first of all i think you have to know that there were how many dates for this there were so many. three. There were approximately three <laughs> dates there, for this. There were, yeah. there were three dates. Originally, it was going to be a two-night show, March twentieth and twenty-first. Then it was only March twentieth. What was after that? Um, and then, and April? then all the coronavirus <laughs> stuff happened. That so was we had April. To it. it postponed to April. Yeah. So then we postponed it to April fourth. Right. Yeah. And, and now we're here. Now. Yeah. We're so I think originally, when we were shooting for March twentieth, I think we were all freaking out. Yeah. I don't think we know what we were doing. Or did we? I don't remember. We did, but it's we did. It's been a bit over a month into quarantine. It's insane. Yeah. Well, I thought it's been so much longer. I know. Yeah. Time is moving very slowly. But actually, I take back what I said. I think when we... I think we... We would have... I think we would have been prepared. For the March 20th one, we were just, we were just about to be prepared. Hmm. We, I, I think we would have like, been prepared When it came then. time, I think we were ready to do it. But and then we didn't do it. Hmm. And everything fell apart. And um, I was going to say, um, we uh, for the Christmas Carol, uh, not many other people know this, but um, we were sort of, un I think we were sort of under a considerable amount of pressure for that. Yeah. And um, it was, I mean, that was, that itself was um, sort of improv too. So I think that also shows that's sort of the shape of this um, theater group. It's mm -hmm. not all planned out. Not every... Yeah. Thing is planned out. We yeah. do things sort of improvisationally. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking <coughs> about, about um, a Christmas Carol, we did not do a run through for that. No, no, no we, we never did a full we run never through. Did a no. full run but through. we did a very good job. Yeah. I think we did like a halfway run through. Yeah. Yes. Maybe At the most. first act. And then we looked out into the crowd. And we were like, like oh like my 30 god. 30 minutes this is before, happening. 30 <laughs> minutes before it was supposed to start. And, and people there was were already like there. 50 people out there. And we were just like, let's just do it. We, it's fine. Yeah. Let's right. do it. I remember I thought it wouldn't be able to see me because it was dark. And I, when I, on the final scene, I, I sat up to fix my nightgown. Everybody could see me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to. 
everybody take a look at this video that I'm about to put in. <laughs> he walks across the stage, he lays down, and then he gets up, rubs his knees, <laughs> and then lays down again. So yeah, take a look at that. Okay, so um, in the production phase of this play, what were some major milestones? Everything. Being, like, knowing who our cast was, finally. That was, uh, that was. Also, whenever I finished actually rewriting the script, but then it was kind of still a creative process because we had to put in the actions that we were doing on stage and have to feel it out as we were going. But yep. there were like little milestones every single day because yeah. we would like figure something out and be more confident in it and then be able to practice it. And it, would, it was just kind of a creative process the entire way through. But I that's not a bad thing. the script was a lot to deal with. That was. Yeah, um, it was. Because um, it's, um, the mousetrap is actually, it's by far, it's the largest play that we have done. Yeah, yeah originally it was 90 pages long. Um, how, many, how many pages was A Christmas Girl? I don't know. 20. 20. 20. <laughs> yeah, Christmas even... Carol was like eight pages. I, no, no, no. I, eight that, to 20 pages. No, no, That's no, no, that, no, no. But that Christmas Carol script, I cut that to the bone. That was, I pretty much threw out an entire act, and then I condensed even more. Yeah. With Scrooge and a Christmas Carol, I had about 64 lines. I had more than that in a mousetrap, and I was a, more of a minor character. Yeah. Did you you were probably example. the most minor character. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, just to give a uh, Which is the only reason why you were like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and even then I was not really wanting to do it, but, yeah. you know. I feel, I've been thinking about this, there's a lot of things I feel like that I single-handedly caused the coronavirus out of sheer will of not wanting to do certain <laughs> things. I feel like I willed the coronavirus into existence. <laughs> and this is not a joke. I've been thinking about this so many times. I think about it every time I fall asleep that I alone am responsible for the coronavirus. <laughs> What was the question? Um, what were major milestones in the play? Major milestones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we had a set. Is there anything else? That actually, <laughs> oh, the I agree sets. with that. I think that was very good. What, Getting the set? Yes. Well. Yeah, the set that, didn't come together until... Right. It was last like the last week. week. The and last, like, that we were. Um, actually, um, I know another thing... The I was, original date, the March 20th date, didn't come together until, like, the last <clears> week. Yeah. And I know, uh, at least I was very excited for uh, the costumes mm -hmm. when we uh, were yeah, able to get that, like, the, uh, the day, a uh, couple days before... Um, we were measuring uh, just to be able to have our costumes the right size and everything. And then um, I think it was a Saturday practice. The following Saturday, we they brought the costumes, mm -hmm. and I, I know I was really excited for that. Yeah. Did we ever accomplish fixing my wolf, my my wolf? <laughs> oh, did we ever do that? I don't know if that was a milestone we accomplished, but that was still a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. that I think was it was funny. Both. Yeah, <laughs> William, really one involved. of our, with the guy who was going to play Park. Uh, I remember What's that. his name? Giles. 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 The, um, one of the hosts, he could not say my wife. There was a barber and my wife. And she was beautiful. A foolish barber and my wife. She was his reason and his life. And she was my wife. <laughs> It was constantly my wolf. <laughs> my wolf. My wolf. And it was great though. My wolf. It was amazing. <laughs> it was great. It was amazing. But it was a milestone that we overcame. No, it was. Milestone was getting William to hold Jesse's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. There was William only one physical scene. Physical touching. William, William, the, William does not like physical touching. There was one scene where they were physically touching, and he was like. <laughs> <laughs> and only one. Or only was it one. one? It was. It was the, one. It was the intro scene. Scene, right? Yeah. It was yeah. the intro scene. And then I, I yeah. Tried to Your hands are freezing. Touch him during one of my lines. He did not like that. <laughs> he was like. <laughs> yeah. It was with. About whenever he was arguing with Molly, I tried to touch him about that. He, he, did not, not, he did not enjoy that. No. Even when somebody would sit too close to him on the couch, he would be like... Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that's pretty fun. He loved his cards, though. Oh, he did love his cards. If he had his cards, he was playing solitaire by himself the entire time. But I mean, I think that also shows, like, uh, as an actor, you have to do things outside of your comfort zone. You're not you. You're someone else. So you have to do that. You would normally be uncomfortable with people touching you, but Giles. Mm. (laughs) I don't think Giles is uncomfortable. I think he just doesn't want it. He's I think right. he just doesn't he's, like people um, in general. He, in a way, he's a little pessimistic <laughs> because, yeah. like, uh, he has, he already has uh, sort of this um, this prejudice. Like, uh, he always he uh, he made these um, these judgments about uh, people coming in like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before they walk into the door. Right. Before he even knew. Like, uh, who who's they were. that again? It's probably the Culver Street murderer. Yeah. 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 Um, were there so the mousetrap? Uh, I I think we already. Um, uh, talk about like uh, we d- uh, we did the set and um, most of this we just got from other people's houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the uh, question is, um, were there any big purchases you had to make for the play? Didn't we spend another like a thousand dollar on mics? Yeah, more microphones. These yeah, right there. These. Those. Yeah. That was um, our big. That was our big spend, I think. And yeah. that, I guess we spent some money on costumes. I don't know what the situation. Yeah. Uh, what's the situation with that? So we yeah. lost five hundred dollars on costumes. Mm. Other than that, so if you want to donate, <laughs> yeah, the posters. Yeah, posters. The posters. And then, um, That's true. We have a box of goodies in my classroom. So um, I think uh, all of us uh, except Robbie here, uh, we all had um, uh, acting uh, parts. Uh, but still, Robbie, you had a very crucial part to the play uh, but the question is describe your role in the mouse trap so like uh, details like um, what was your sort of your favorite part in doing that you want to go around that way or that way start with me uh, I was Parker who was originally Perosini who was changed to East Sauce who was then changed to Parker <laughs> after no, let's go again one more time for the slow people <laughs> I played the role of Parker <laughs> Originally, Peravacini changed to Iswas, then changed to Parker. Um, <laughs> Parker was this sort of last minute arrival, a foreigner who kind of, he didn't seem to have too much involvement with what was going on, from what it felt like in my opinion. He didn't seem to care about the murder too much. He, he just seemed like this weird, he was kind of creepy just old guy. He just most creepy and somewhere. suspicious. He made jokes about it. He made Molly very uncomfortable at certain scenes, <laughs> which I thought was funny. That's about it, honestly. And he had a Rolls Royce. He did have a Rolls Royce. I, think, I, yeah. think, I don't think we ever took into account how rich he was. Oh, yeah, yeah he was definitely I rich. Think I was a, he was a we baller. Did. He was. He was. I, yeah. <laughs> he was from America, I think. Yeah, that's what we decided yeah. on. Yeah. 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 So, oh, I just said I was the production team. Oh, so yeah, you, but, but I mean, your production team. I mean, you did lights, you did sound, yeah. you, um, you, I, I think you oversee a lot of the play. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was, I played the part of Major Metcalf. So he is, um, he's sort of an older gentleman, and he, uh, he's from the British Army, so he's a veteran, and uh, he's sort of um, level-headed, so um, not too suspicious, but still. Anyone can be the murderer. He's very um, much a gen- he's very much a gentleman too. Right. Um, he's very polite. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, I was Miss Casewell. I had I lived um, abroad for most of my life, but I was actually born in England, which kind of made me a little bit suspicious because I moved away when I was twelve years old. Um, but also, I directed the play. Also, you aren't blood red, just pink. <laughs> just pink. <laughs> that was one of the lines in the play. Not a socialist. <laughs> Not blood red, just, just pink. Yep. A little. Just bit. kind of a socialist. Yeah. Oh yeah, she. A little and bit. And we have some. We have some videos from our other friends at home, who are going to tell you what they did. Hi, I'm Hannah Robertson. I'm a part of Top Hat Productions. I am starring in the play The Mousetrap. I'm Mrs. Boyle. Uh, the character, she's very, very stuck up. Um, nothing is right to her. She criticizes almost everything about 
every little thing. The biggest challenges for me during this play was probably learning my lines. I didn't have that many, but I am not very good at memorizing things. But I was very proud of myself because I remembered all of my lines and I'm really sad that I won't be able to show you guys all the work that I put in along with all the other cast. So much work was put into this play and it's really sad that we're not going to be able to show you, but that was probably my biggest accomplishment was learning all of my lines and where to go and when to do it. Hello, my name is Sonia Guan and I worked as a crew of the costume department of SJC8 Top Hit Production. My main role in the productions were getting the actors dressed up and to each of the characters they play and checking costumes and accessories before the actors go on the stage. Also, my job was organizing and maintaining each costumes before and after the play so that they can be returned to the costume rental without any problem. You know, my job is kind of involves in when play actually happens. So I just saying I'm really disappointed and upset because I will never be able to see the stage filled up with the actors who are in their costumes that I worked on. Um, okay, so, um, next question is, um, so we did go over some of the milestones, um, some of the things that happened in the play, so, um, what were some of the best moments and some of the worst moments when you're making this play? Best moments and worst moments. The worst moment for me? Being casted. <laughs> Joking. Uh, worst moment was this one set of lines I got backwards repeatedly, and I could say them fine as me. I couldn't say them as Barker. Oh, but I can't say that when I can't say that when I need to. I can't say that as Barker. You just said it. As Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. Can you be? <laughs> you see? <laughs> you see? You see? You to be boring. The people you. That's not right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Corey. I beseech you to be wary of the people you allow into your home. You allow into your home. Let uh, allow whatever. The best moment. I don't know. Pizza time. Pizza time is always fun. Pizza oh, time has no. been a running, a best running moment. Thing. A running yes. pizza best guy, moment. Pizza hut guy. <gasps> the pizza hut guy. Oh, oh, yes. yes. oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. Pizza hut guy. What's gauntlet. his name? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, know. Pizza hut guy. Know? Pizza hut guy. <laughs> So the for all of the love. viewers who are so confused, there was this. We would we order pizza. We have like four hour practices. Yeah. So obviously we need some food. So we would order pizza, and every time the same guy would come. Yeah. First it was just a normal guy. We opened the door. We got our pizza. We gave him some money. It was very chill, you know. The second time there was a clown at the door. <laughs> it was a, it was the same pizza guy, but. He had a clown mask, right? Yes. Yeah, he um, had a clown and then mask. I, and then after that, what was it? Right, um, next time, um, he actually brought this, um, it was a very nice, um, very nice um, and eloquent um, Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> and he also brought with him, uh, so this Infinity Gauntlet, it was uh, showed in Avengers Infinity War, but he also brought the Nano Gauntlet, which is basically Iron Man's version of the Infinity Gauntlet yeah. in Avengers Endgame. Now, he brought both of these in... <laughs> It's very interesting. And you know, I think. Well, it, don't forget the. Yeah, I was about to say, Ethan had a um, Ethan had a gun duel. <laughs> the, at the end of the practice, we all kind of redid that scene from The Office where they're all like. Yeah. Oh, we do we, we do that multiple of, times. We have a bunch of weird yeah. instances with guns. We do that. Yeah, we especially also William. William. Just, William. Uh, oh yes, just he likes to guns. just be like. William is our Michael Scott. He's our SWAT improv. team member. William, even from the beginning of the school year, it was it was always like bang FBI. <laughs> yes, there was always FBI. Well, um, uh, I think like uh, I think we all sort of know The Office, and uh, me and William we're uh, fans of The Office. Mm -hmm. Ethan doesn't watch The Office. Oh, okay, so sorry, Ethan, but um, <laughs> me and uh, me and William we both like The Office, so we have like uh, w that's one of my favorite things to do. We um, do the the gun thing, like uh, the iconic scene from uh, The Office episode uh, season six, I believe, episode <laughs> ten, the murder. 
Um, that was um, the iconic scene when there there's a yep. triangle, and we uh, this one um, and Mean Williams' standoff. favorite scenes. Oh, good. I have crossbows. We'll put down our weaponry on the count of three. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. One, two, two, three. three. Yeah! My best moment? I don't know. I don't know. What did you do? You, I don't you, know. This is everything you do in this play is your best yeah, moment. Yeah, but that's not my best moment. That's like, not my favorite moment. What's your favorite moment? My favorite moment. Cake? Cake is good. Cake is, cake is definitely The pizza good. time is really great. Well, I mean, I think practice as a whole is a favorite moment. Yeah. Um, actually, I would say, like, uh, sometimes when we get off track, we have made um, other ideas for plays. Like, uh, yeah. I think we've had enough play ideas to fill the entirety of next year. Yeah. Yeah. We already have a lot. Yeah, so getting off topic and just having a lot of fun. It's part of the practice. While also being productive. Yeah. And even though this sounds <laughs> like a major excuse for procrastination and just goofing off, it does actually work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. I think it kind of relieves some of the stress that we go through when we're trying to get the play, like, perfected as much as we can. Because we get so, like, tunnel vision focused on getting stuff done mm -hmm. that we kind of, like, get ourselves stressed out too much. But, like, when we have those little moments of, like, fun and, like, joy and just joking around, it mm -hmm. just balances everything out and it makes it easier mm -hmm. to cope. Yeah, and I think my worst moment was what my tooth my tooth do you guys uh, remember that yeah <laughs> do you guys remember my oh tooth my i had to leave so it was like i don't i don't know what it was but it was like one side of my mouth just kept growing and growing on the bottom half and i, I think it was i was literally teeth. walking around like this <laughs> like the whole time the whole night and i left and i got some tylenol and i came back and it has never happened again so i don't know what the heck that was but that was my worst moment. Well, you know, I'm sure it's bad, but don't forget the first day you bought, uh, bought a pair of sunglasses, you broke them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. The first day. I thought I could play basketball on one of our breaks. <laughs> so I so I broke my sunglasses, yeah. Well, I that was definitely that. a I remember bad you had moment. sunglasses. Normal Robbie? Luxury model Robbie. Yeah, Normal Ethan? <laughs> Blind Ethan. Yeah. Um, Can't you fit somewhere? Yeah, they're fixed. Actually, they're in my car. I should go get them. I would say um, uh, one of my best moments is seeing Boxman. He was just an influential <laughs> oh, yeah. figure. He just brought so much joy into the theater. And I think he really was a hero. He's just this indestructible, great marvel of technology <laughs> that we have brought on the stage. Yeah. He was just kind of protector of the stage. Boxman. He was. was great. Boxman was the box that our mics came in. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, so our microphones served multiple purposes. Yeah. Okay, well, that was great. That was Another great tangent. info. So, um, next, uh, next question here is, uh, what was the biggest challenge of the play? What was, like, the thing that kind of stopped us the, the most? The top challenge? Casting. Yeah. And the script. And coronavirus. Yeah. And coronavirus. coronavirus. The coronavirus was probably number one. The coronavirus was our <laughs> yeah. ultimate downfall. So, all right, so... Uh, I think we also uh, sort of touched on this a little bit, but um, what were each of your favorite parts of doing top hat practices? Okay, so, oh, so my best moment a minute ago was the whole practice, so now I have to narrow it down even further. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> oh, else go. My favorite part was, like, whenever we would, not, not just, like, when we would joke around, but when we would literally laugh so hard none of us could breathe. That was yeah. my favorite mm. part. Because I felt, I feel like it was relieving, mm -hmm. because we would be like so stressed during yeah. practices. Remember, I threw a volleyball, and Robbie had stepped into the trajectory of the volleyball, <laughs> <laughs> right in the face. That was really funny. Wait, wait, uh, are you phrasing this into a different way, or that's <laughs> the truth? It's, no, he. I threw the volleyball, and he stepped into he the stepped trajectory. Into, do he, I? He, I don't remember this. He was very close to it when I threw it, but he, he positioned himself in a way it would hit him in the face, directly, in, like, in the face. It was really funny. <laughs> Do I remember that? I don't remember that. I must have, like, I must say it was the day we had got concussed. Oh, no, I do remember that. 
Yeah, I don't have a video, but... I had turned, I just threw it, and Robbie was that, just there. That whole practice that we had cake was a lot. That was the day we did the gun thing. Oh, right. yeah. He, he tried to jump off the things in the back and jump onto me. <laughs> oh, yeah, didn't uh, And his name is... Come closer. It stays. You're ruining the script. And... Closer. Closer. <laughs> and his name is Crap! Oh, that was when William flew across the court in the chair. Yep. Oh, That's, yeah. Uh, I remember that. <laughs> he would just, like, shuffle across yeah. <laughs> and just, like, oh, roll oh, around. Oh, no, he would not shuffle. He would bolt. I mean, like, and, he would run. And you would, like, uh, he would, like, uh... He would like uh, he yeah. just like, like a, be yeah. like um, Titanic. Yeah, he would just be Titanic on the chair and just yeah. floating. That was just elegantly. everybody would I just. I fell to get so you into the picture, and instead I got in the picture looking like an insane person. Oh yeah, of the birthday pictures. Yeah. Yep. And um, we spilled the forks. All the forks. Yep. All the forks got spilled. And I tried to eat the cake, but that was really sweet and it hurt. <laughs> oh yeah, he had a diabetic-induced heart attack. Yep. Also, I'm waiting for it to go to a diabetic-induced heart attack from this. I remember that. Next question. Any secrets or drama on set? Secrets? Oh. Secrets. I, I don't know about that. There's you mean like the ending or something? On that. One more question? Okay. There's, uh, there's think... another question that will get you into that easier. Oh, a drama, though. Drama? drama? I don't think we should discuss the drama. Nah. <laughs> I don't want to bring it back up. Let's not mention any names. Yeah. It's bonding experience. It is yeah. bonding experience. It happened, have to but we overcome. came out. We came out better on the yeah. other side. When yeah. you grow close to people, you share everything about it. Yeah. yeah. So like every time I fight with my uh, cat? uncle, no, when my cat gets me mad, I kind of just have to leave my room. <laughs> the other night, actually, this is super off topic. For no reason, he jumped up onto my chest and tried to hold on to me. And instead, just buried his claws into my chest. He just wanted to be held. Yeah, it wasn't very good. I got very mad. I didn't do it. I kind of just made it. I know what it can mean to my cats. So I made a noise that let him know I was mad at him and he went under the table. Would you do hiss at him? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so. Um, Uh, surely there are some surprises for opening night, and what were they? There were there were a few surprises, I think. Yeah. yeah. No, she's surprises. A few surprises. Um, Hannah, Hannah Robertson had a nice, nice little scene. Had a really cool scene. Oh, I'm Mrs. Sucks. Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Mrs. That is, Boyle. That's her quote. That's her trade, trademark. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's her signature. That was her signature thing. All right. But the death scene. Yeah, that was very nice. All the lights were going to shut off. It was going to be pitch black dark. And the Culver Street murderer was going to walk up, or, yeah, right? Walk down the, the Culver walk Street down the middle of the aisle. Walk down the middle of the aisle with everybody on each side. They're going to be like, <gasps> who is that? And then he was going to pull Raise out a arm. special purchase that our dear friend Ethan had made. And he was going to pop a few caps in Mrs. Boyle's head. You know, when oh you say God, made no. a special purpose, uh, purchase, and they say pop a few caps, you really just say, <laughs> you really just said bought it. a gun. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to you wanna, you wanna, yeah, elaborate on that so they know we didn't buy a gun. Not a prop gun, but a That wouldn't actually do any harm to anyone. Gun. No, it was, it was a prop, prop gun sounds less yeah, it's bad. A prop gun. It looks like a real gun, but it, isn't. With the exception yeah. of a little orange piece in the and middle. And you know, I'm starting to think maybe it's good. Maybe there's some good stuff that came out of us not doing it. Yeah. Because how loud that thing was. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad for all the geriatric people. What? Old people. 
<laughs> you could just say old people. But it was so loud. That video that you sent? You don't know, the echoed. video did not do justice. Yep. Okay, so, wait. Biggest, most shocking part of the play. <laughs> oh, I've... Well, that's, that's what it just was. Yeah. Oh, okay, the so... most shocking part of the play was the that our brains got blown out. Yeah, because originally it was no, choking. No, I, I, I personally think that it's the ending where the whole plot twist happens and it all like comes together and like they're like <gasps> just like gasp. You know, yeah. Yeah. It, I don't I know think... what it might be. I never got to the ending. I really didn't even know like I just scratched the mic. The ending in my personal opinion felt really short. Yeah. Mm. It just like oh this happens then it does Oh, reveal. End. I think the... I didn't really no even get action. to know the ending. I, yeah. I never really knew the play before we did it. We never really did the ending, though, on practice, to be fair. I think we did it a few times. Yeah, a few times. Not really thoroughly, though. That's why. Yeah. So, um... Alright, so now we're getting to the part uh, regarding uh, the, um... This, uh, this new pandemic. Um, so, what were your reactions when hearing that the play was canceled. I was really annoyed. I was annoyed and sad because it was like all the hard work that we put into this kind of was just like poof. But also the hard work that we did kind of just made us grow closer as a group and <clears throat> I don't regret it, honestly. I really don't. Hi everybody. Uh, this year was an amazing one for Top Hat Productions. This was our very first year in existence, and I have to say that for that being the case, this group was just astounding. Uh, I will never forget A Christmas Carol. We were all so, so nervous, uh, petrified. Uh, when it came to how everything would turn out and between running back and forth those moments when I just got to stand in front of the stage and see all of these students in action you know, doing what they do delivering their lines um, interacting with one another playing to the music just those perfect moments where the ghost steps into the lighting in the right way and you just get get chills. Um, I, I, I knew, I knew we were doing something that, that needed to be done. enjoy doing this play. I loved every single thing about it. Us getting off topic very easily at rehearsals to having fun and getting things done at the same time. It was awesome. I got to make friends with people that I probably wouldn't have been friends with if it wasn't for Top Hat Productions. And uh, I still get a little teary-eyed when, when I think about it because it, they're, they're, they're just nothing like being so, so proud of uh, a group of, of students. Um, we knew after, you know, we succeeded with that, that um, we just had to, to keep, you know, raising the um, bar. And that was what we were trying to do with the mousetrap. And we would have done that uh, because these students, oh, they spent so much time um, at marathon practices uh, trying to prepare for this play and make it really just special in, in the minutest of ways. It, it, it's just special even when there's not an end product to get to be with a group who enjoys creating together, who enjoys one another's company, um, 
who can have fun together, get a little stressed with one another, and all of those sorts of things, and you know, just just, just be able to, 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 to do it all. And, Out of questions. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with us tonight. <laughs> that was a confetti can. thing. Let's Anna, all let's all post. okay in post production. Yeah. Let's all pop confetti cannons for the camera. Wait wait wait. What should we say? Um, we should say something like. What should we say? Fifty years of Cavaliers. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> something more top hatish. Like um. Fifty years of top hat. <laughs> no. <laughs> this was our first year. The first as year of top hat. The first year of Top no. Hat. No. Um, Death to Coronavirus. Death to Coronavirus! Or check us out at this building. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel, okay? I, I will make a YouTube channel of this place. We will take advertisements uh, like this one. What if I make it first? I actually already made it, so. Uh, so, I don't have the link on me right now, but expect a YouTube channel and expect demonetization, cause we just.